Despite significant government efforts to boost population growth and avoid a demographic disaster, China's population growth rate has dropped to its lowest in six decades and will only just outweigh deaths in 2021. In today's video, we'll talk about China's population crisis, so stay tuned till the end of the video to learn it all. As birth rates fell, China's population increased more slowly than it had since the 1950s, increasing concerns about Beijing's capacity to support its economy as it succumbs to the same aging trends hitting affluent countries like Japan. 10.62 million babies were born in China in 2021, or 7.52 births per 1,000 people, according to data released by the National Office of Statistics. 10.14 million deaths, or a mortality rate of 7.18 per thousand, were reported during the same time period, leading to a population growth rate of only 0.34 per thousand people. The once-a-decade consensus conducted in May of last year revealed an average annual rise of 0.53%, down from 0.57% reported from 2000 to 2010. The growth rate is at the lowest it's been since 1960. With declining birth rates, forecasts of impending negative population growth, and an aging population, China, like most of East Asia, is experiencing a population crisis. According to the data released, China's over-60 population increased from 18.7% in 2020 to 18.9%. The population crisis is widely recognized, but Xi Wei Chang, the chief economist at Pinpoint Asset Management, noted that the rate of population aging is unquestionably quicker than anticipated. This means that the population of China as a whole may have peaked in 2021. Additionally, it shows that China's potential growth is probably slowing more quickly than anticipated. Beijing has announced significant adjustments such as raising the retirement age to combat the downturn. The two-child policy that was implemented in 2016 and had caused a minor rise in births before falling again has been replaced with a three-child policy. Young Chinese people's hesitation to have children is frequently attributed to the high cost of living, postponed marriages, and lack of social mobility. Beijing has responded by outlawing pricey private tutoring and promising improved access to childcare and maternity leave. The findings, according to Asian demographics expert Professor Wang Feng of the University of California, Irvine, demonstrated that the core causes were more complex than had previously been thought. In his words to The Guardian, the initiatives announced last year are essentially rhetoric or, at most, like band-aids. What we are currently witnessing is likely just the beginning of a further decline in birth rate and a prolonged process of population decline in China without addressing the deeply rooted causes discouraging young Chinese from getting married and having children, from gender inequality to high living costs. A substantial slowdown in GDP growth in the latter months of 2021, according to data revealed alongside population findings, indicates that China may also experience economic turmoil. The second largest economy in the world, China, announced a GDP increase of 8.1% year over year, above government expectations of 6%. But the growth was concentrated in the first half of the year. It increased by 4% in the fourth quarter, down from 4.9% in the third. According to bureau spokesman Ning Jize, the domestic economy is under the triple pressures of demand contraction, supply shock, and weakening expectations. Extremely high levels of consumer behavior change and government involvement in key Chinese businesses have occurred during the past year. From 3.9% in November to 1.7% in December, the increase in retail sales decreased. The latest Omicron outbreaks in China have increased the danger of negative economic growth, according to Zhang. A development crisis has slowed down construction and hurt real estate sales, most notably because of the continuous financial struggles of the influential company Evergrande. Waves of layoffs have also been caused by government interference in the $1 billion private tutoring market and ongoing enforcement of tech sector regulations. Power outages have been attributed to an effort to reduce emissions, problems with the supply chain, restrictions on some imported coal, and an increase in electricity pricing. The results of the nation's once-every-10-year census, which was conducted in 2020, showed that the population of mainland China climbed 5.38% to 1.41 billion people. Despite growth having slowed ever since the one-child policy was implemented in the late 1970s, that was the smallest since the first modern census was taken in 1953. According to data, the fertility rate for women will be 1.3 in 2020, which is comparable to older nations like Japan and Italy. The blaring alarm for China's policymakers is that without first accumulating the family wealth of G7 nations, the world's second-largest economy may already be in an irreversible population decline. 
With a fertility rate of about 1.8, China nearly missed its 2016 goal of increasing its population to about 1.42 billion by 2020. China introduced a two-child restriction in 2016 to replace its one-child policy, which was initially implemented to slow the country's population expansion. The sharp decline in population will increase pressure on Beijing to increase incentives for couples to have more children. These incentives have so far fallen short of offsetting the impact of couples' career decisions and high cost of living, which couples claim has discouraged them from starting extended families. Analysts predicted that the census results will support arguments made by officials for raising the retirement age of the nation as soon as possible, given the population's significant aging. Ning Jize, director of the National Bureau of Statistics, predicted that future population growth will reduce based on recent population development trends in a statement made following the announcement of the census results. China's population will peak eventually, but the exact date is still up in the air. According to estimates, China's population will continue to exceed 1.4 billion in the near future, said Ning. China's state media has been more pessimistic about the future in recent months, speculating that the population may begin to decline over the next few years. According to the UN, mainland China's population will reach a peak in 2030 and then begin to decline. However, citing unnamed sources with knowledge of the situation, the Financial Times Daily reported in late April that the population actually decreased in 2020 compared to a year earlier. The total count in the 2020 census was actually marginally higher than the predicted 1.4005 billion in 2019 in a more limited official survey released in February of the previous year. One encouraging aspect of the data was an unexpected rise in the percentage of young people. In 2020, 17.95% of the population was 14 years old or younger, up from 16.6% in 2010. With the exception of 2016, the annual birth rate decreased from 2016 to 2019. According to Ning, China had 12 million births in 2018, a dramatic decrease from 14.65 million in 2019 and the lowest number since 1961. According to Huang Wenzheng, a demographer at the Center for China and Globalization, a think tank with offices in Beijing, it doesn't take published census statistics to infer that China is suffering a large reduction in births. The analysts predicted that even if China's population didn't decrease in 2020, it will in 2021 or 2022 or very shortly. Despite parental pressure to have children, urban couples, especially those born after 1990, tend to value their independence and jobs more than establishing a family. The majority of Chinese people now live in large cities, where rising living expenses have further discouraged couples from starting families. A 2005 analysis from a government think tank estimated that raising a child in China would cost an average household 490,000 yuan, or $74,838. Before the 2020 census results were released, she added, Second, the cost of raising a baby is excessive in Shanghai. After giving birth, you instantly wave your freedom goodbye. A shrinking pool of working individuals will test China's ability to support and care for an elderly population, as well as put pressure on the working age population and productivity. The figures showed that compared to the 8.87% recorded in 2010, those 65 and over made up 13.5% of the population in 2020. With that, we've come to an end, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.